This is this, something I'd like to encourage you to get is I got this years ago and it does a chart form of these th uh, things about specific religions. Key person or founder and date and location of that religion, key writings or scriptures, who is God in their writing, who is Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit, how to be saved, what happens after death, and other beliefs and practices. And it starts out with biblical Christianity, goes to Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, Armstrongism, Unification Church, Christian Science, Unity School of Christianity, Spiritualism or Spiritism, Scientology, then the next side is New Age, Judaism, Hinduism, Hare Krishna, Transcendental Meditation, Buddhism, and then another form of Shoshu Buddhism, Islam, Baha'i World Faith. This thing is loaded with accurate information. If you want to, to find out and study further, I'm going to recommend this to you. You don't have to even order it. If you do a PDF, it's free online by Rose Publishers or Publishing right now. It's out of California. Rose Publishing. You can get a free download of this whole thing. And it's, it's called Christianity, Cults, and Religions. Christianity, Cults, and Religions. Has anybody ever seen this? Yeah, but Jeff, it's, it's good. It really puts it concise, all of them. And so I'm going to read to you today before we get into our study today on the handout. I'm going to read to you what it says about Hinduism. And by the way, of all of these, there are five of these that are offshoots of Hinduism. You must keep this in mind. Hinduism has influenced worldwide religion and American religion in the last four day or five decades immensely. New Age. Hinduism in our country. And then Hare Krishna, you remember that coming to America. And Transcendental Meditation, very much Hindu influence. And then Buddhism, I don't know if you realize that, but Buddhism comes out of this originally. The guy was uh, Buddha, they ended up calling him, that wasn't his original name, was from India, all right? And then this other form of Buddhism, and then Sikhism, if you know what Sikhism is, it's a combination of Hinduism and Muslim belief, basically. All right? And lots of them up in Canada where our son pastor, particularly uh, Edmonton, Alberta. Lots of them. Okay. So I'm going to read to you now what it says about Hinduism to get us started. Key person or founder, date, location. It's debated, but it's probably 3,500 years ago. I have 4,000 years ago, and that's what they say here, is about 2,000 BC. In the Middle East, people that would, what we would call Persians, came the Aryans, the Aryans, came into the northwest and the northern part of present day India and then infiltrated down with the native or the aborigines people of India, which are Dravidians. And they're the dark skinned. As you look at Indians, there are differences in appearance, okay? The Caucasians are the Aryans that came in. They started the caste system, and it was a biased, racist system. It's a social, professional thing of against these Dravidians that were the nationals, which were darker skinned, and then up in the northwest, where this last trip I spent most of my time, that is an area of a lot of Asian or Chinese, you know, from that area, some of Bangladesh, but so forth. But anyway, they are founded, many, it's, it has no one founder, many sects, began about 1800, B.C. to 1000, and that's when the Aryans came in. Many writings included the Vedas, oldest of, of about 10,000 B.C., and it's got a list of others. Mo most contemporary one, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, the, who is God? God is the absolute, a universal spirit. 
sometimes a universal thing even. Everyone is part of God, pantheism, okay? That's Brahman belief of it. Now, we're going to talk about Brahman because Harsh, when I talked to him on the air, airplane flying 15 hours over, is his name, the Indian, we slept some and then we'd talk some more and we had lots of discussion. And he was saying, well, I'm more of this type of Indian Hindu rather than this. And there are many sects. Some of them are ceremonial, some of them are philosophical, some of them are what you would call uh, involved in practical approach. Some of them are idolaters more, worshiping images. You, so you've got a variety. So when you talk to a Hindu, do not take the approach. They have one set belief and you can deal with them on that base. Find out what they really believe. Which sect are they with? Because you've got to address where they're at. Do you catch what I'm saying on that? It's like here in America. You could, you could go to Mormons and there's a... Back in the 80s, there were 12 different divisions of, of Mormons, LDS. Hey, you could go to Baptist today, couldn't you? And find some difference. Some of them are liberals. <laughs> Don't does even believe. Does the truth change when you're talk, talking to them? Well, no, no. But I'm saying the truth that you emphasize to them that counters their false belief. The truth doesn't change, no. no. I know that, but do they believe? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's, 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 we're we're going to get into that on that list. It's, a, it's an eclectic, evolving religion. Over hundreds of years, it evolved. It's just like so many things that are new age and it, no absolutes. Where did that come from? Hindu thought. You know, your, your, your God is as good as my God. Okay? Because there's 330 million gods that some of them worship. Okay? So this God's good for me and your God's good for you. That's where this relativism in our society came into through the new age. There's no absolutes. So you've got to keep this in mind. You can't nail them down. This is what you believe and you ought not to believe that. Oh no, that's not what I believe. I believe this over here. This is what I believe. Not that part of that some Hindus believe, but this part. And mine is just as good as him, his, and his is as good as mine. So keep that in mind. You've got a good question. No absolutes. Okay? So as we go on, uh, Brahman is the form of, and where we get Brahma Bull, okay? Houston Rodeo, that's what I think of. Uh, but Brahmins, and there was a huge Brahma Bull. I mean, he probably stood like that in Delhi, going up the street. Everybody's having to stop on busy street. I mean, loaded street. It's unique. Uh, but it, it, it says every... Everyone is a part of God. The Brahman belief, it's like the individual drops in a sea. It's all sea, but that's an individual drop, but it's still a part of the whole. Okay? People worship manifestations of Brahman. They're gods and goddesses. People are God, but are unaware of it. So they would look at us and say, yes, you, you don't know that. You're, you're part of God, but you're just not aware of it. So once again, deifying man, humanizing God, and even going let lower than human, as the Mormons do. Jesus Christ, okay, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a teacher, a guru, or an av avatar, and an incarnation of Vishnu. Vishnu is their creator. Um, sustainer God sustains the universe. Okay, they got different gods. Brahman is the creator God. Vishnu is the sustainer of the creation, and they've got a destroyer God that's next in line. All right, <laughs> I mean they got them all, but his death does not atone for sins, and he did not rise from the dead. Okay, so that's a key point in witnessing to them about Christ. He's, 
Okay, now, the Holy Spirit is not a part of this belief. There's no equivalent of the Holy Spirit in Hinduism. And then how to be saved? What is salvation? Salvation is to, to be released from the cycle of reincarnation. What they believe is the transmigration of the soul. The soul leaves this dead body when it dies and is given another body according to the karma of that individual in this previous life. And they may go to another body that is an animal or they may go to another human body. Or they might go to an insect, okay? Depending on their karma in this life. That's what they believe, okay? And so they're saying the body dies, but the soul is eternal. But in order to get to nirvana, the ultimate salvation, that is to get off of this reincarnation wheel of life, dying and reincarnating, dying and reincarnating, but get released off of it, and now you're in peace and you're not conscious and you're absorbed into the universal soul. Okay? It's an escape really from life. Okay? Can take many lifetimes to be saved. Final salvation is an absorption or union with Brahman. Okay? The creator. Okay. Then what happens after death, reincarnation new into a better status if you have good karma, if a person has behaved well. If one has been bad, he can be reborn and pay for past sins, his bad karma in the previous life by suffering and being in a bad body, okay? Now, this is what you've got to keep in mind. This is the key doctrine of them, transmigration. Okay, this is, this is one thing that all Hindus will not budge on. We call it reincarnation. They, some would call it transmigration. All right. Now, some other beliefs. Some disciples wear orange robes and have shaved heads. Many Hindus worship stone and wooden idols in temples. Okay. Gurus demand complete ob- obedience. If you're going to be Following this teacher, this holy man, you have to absolutely obey them without question. Disciples meditate on a word, focusing on one word, one word, or a phrase or a picture. Ongoing. Yoga involves meditation, chanting, postures, breathing exercise. Hey, did that come to America? You better believe it, yoga. Foundations of New Age and Transcendental Meditation are right out of this part. Any questions or comments? Okay. I'm going to read through most of this. Uh, the one uh, that witnessing the Hindus. Okay. Does everybody have a witnessing the Hindu? And our previous one we handed to you last week. I probably have to take this. No, 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 no. The one that we gave last week, it's, it's, it uh, has to do with the age of it. It's Isaiah at the bottom. Does anybody need that from last week? No, probably not. I'm, I'm going to quickly go through this with you. Just, it's one of the oldest religions of the world, dating in origin about 4,000 years ago. That may be a little far out. You get 3,000 to 5,000, give or take 1,000, all right, in, when you read it. It is a religion that evolved by combining many religious beliefs. We can say generally it is an evolved, eclectic religion, that putting religion, a bunch of religions together that has a pantheistic, monistic, impersonal, polytheistic god or gods however you want to handle that. That's a different cult one to determine whether it's God or God's that is not separated from man because of sin. So what we're talking about, God has not separated us from himself because sin because we're all part of God. Sin is an illusion and man is one with God already. So you're not separated from God to start out with. You're a part of God. You are a part of the it. 
or of the personal God, depending on what Hinduism you're talking about. Hinduism is a works religion that is at one time targeted fulfillment and bliss. Their goal was at one time, and when it started out, fulfillment, success, achievement, and bliss, but now targets escape and release to a passionless bliss and peace absorbed in the absolute one. I can see all of you, by the way you're looking right now, you want to sign up and become one of them. Okay? <laughs> I can see that right now by the excitement on your faces, all right? But it is significant to Western people to understand the effect of Hinduism has had on India's society where poverty and a filth abound with much gross immorality, deception, and social corruption and political cor corruption. Every Saturday you'll find us here praying for India. And one of the common prayers is for Modi, their premier or president, to be saved. We know he has a copy of the Bible because one of our workers got him his office a copy of the Bible. Now what he's done with it, we do not know. But this man is a radical Hindu and the RSS is the radical branch of it that kills many Christians today and they wink the eye at it. Okay? One of our VBN guys that I ministered with at the last one this time, he actually has influenced two RSS leaders in his northern area where the Hindu belt is the most radical. And the local one that was over the northern Hindu, radical Hindus, he has seen come to Christ. And the man had, after he told him privately, I have received Christ. And the man was threatening, he was threatened and tried to kill him several times before he got a meeting with him. And he took him to a restaurant and said, I need to talk with you. And he challenged him. This man had to quit his position and just go into oblivion because he knew what would happen to him. Like this priest we talked about earlier. Okay, but corruption, money under the table, bribery. I mean, we know many third world countries operate that way, don't we? <laughs> and I mean, it's just all over. So there's extreme poverty and then a select well do you understand you you've been there you know what it's like so you sitting here in this room well but that's a part of it there's there's poverty filth gross immorality deceptions i mean sex slave all of that deception and social corruption also critical to remember is their main and radical doctrine of transmigration which teaches humans are reborn after death into animals. The person or the spirit is not reborn. They've got a new body, a new physical body. What we know in Christianity, you have to be born anew in your spirit, not another body. And resurrection is not reincarnation. It's a one-time shot. <laughs> resurrection, and everybody's going to have it but one time to this earthly body, some to judgment of the unjust and some to heaven for the just, okay? This has been adopted into various American versions where people are reincarnated into other human life as opposed to animal life. Americans have bought this and they believe that they have lived in a previous life, okay? And they'll give you details of that previous life, okay? But how do they get those details that are so accurate? That's always the question. It's reality. They do have accurate details of people that several generations away that none of their family knew, and they have accurate details about what they were and did. How do they know that? That's it right here on the sheet, the answer. Okay, how do we explain that memory that supposedly reincarnated people have a previous life by possessing much specific details? Answer, think of knowledge of never dying fallen angels. Yeah, I don't understand. The demons. Well, I understand that. But is this a person that lived 
two or three generations ago. And two or three centuries ago. They did this or that? Yeah. Was that recorded? Well, they can go back and trace certain things with those in genealogy and find out some of those things are accurate. Okay? But why are they accurate? Because the person lived there? No, demons were there. In fact, it might be the demon that's ministering to them that was in this person several generations ago. Okay? Now, we got to we got to acknowledge the spirit world. This mm -hmm. happens. Okay, this is reality. We many times uh, the average layman doesn't understand that this kind of dynamic has gone. There's, there's generational demons. They go from one a parent to a child, to that from that child to the next grandchild and to this, and go down a family line. Okay. All right. Any other easy questions? <laughs> All right, three or four things that must be emphasized to Hindus in gospel witnessing. They are the uniqueness of Christ as the only Savior. The way you're going to get salvation, ultimate bliss and blessing, is Christ and Christ alone. Okay? And he did die on the cross, and he did raise from the grave, and there is historical evidence of that. We have a ministry that is a way to truth and freedom book of Jean Gerganus. And this is the book that we use in India to train new Christians into the Christian beliefs and standards that they ought to have. But it's also an evangelistic book. Some of you know Mel Laycock's book, One by One. Uh, first half of it is an evangelistic outreach of verses, question and answers. And the second half of it is a discipleship of a Christian to get them started. Well, this book does that. It's 25 lessons. They have a graduation ceremony where the people of that pastor that's leading it. Well, our key guy over there has now put it online. It just recently has gone to Somalia and it's out being advertised to uh, Ethiopia. And this guy in Ethiopia got it, and he, re, he got this advertisement online and came back and said the Christian's uh, faith is fake news and all kinds of stuff and started countering. Well, J this James that is our leader over there WhatsApped us and said, how do I answer this guy? <laughs> and Jim Starr said, no, nah, don't argue with him. Just tell him to take the lessons. <laughs> That's Jim is a direct guy. I wrote in. I said, brother, write back and ask the guy. Does he really want? Is he looking for an argument or does he want to study facts? Because Jim had mentioned that different historians who of Christ's time, first century or second century established the historical resurrection of Christ. Josephus, the Jew, has that in his Antiquities of the Jews about their wars. And he's, he had no reason to say that Christ died and raised buried because he never became a Christian. He was always a Jew, a true religious Jew, okay? But he states that in his book and other historians. I said, yeah, send that to him, but have him go to abomb.com if he really wants to study facts. It's Arab, it's Arabic biblical online ministries, Bible studies is what it's, and he'll get his answers. Now what I'm saying is, the the Hindus, uh, they have the, this and. Christ is the answer. That's one of the things that you're going to have to start with him. Exclusiveness of the Trinity is the only God in the whole universe. And that's where Isaiah 43 and 44 and 45 come in. And you can do the study of that on your own. But the agreement of the Bible in contrast to the contradictions of the many scriptures in, uh, in their belief. Because their sex and their scriptures contradict one another. And they know that if they've studied them. 
There's lots of them, but if they've studied them, they literally contradict one another. Where the Bible does not contradict itself. Over 1,400 years of being written by 40-some authors, there's no contradiction. There's unity and there's simplicity in it. And the simplicity of salvation by grace alone, apart from works of ceremony, sacrificing, idol worship, pilgrimages, meditations. Pastor Crockett uh, talked about that rats idol. Did you remember that? Last week, if you were here and rats, you see all kinds of things over there. The, you drive down the street in Delhi and you see, here's a, a temple and all the offerings out there being put out right there in the front of the temple. Buddhism, the pagodas over there. It was mentioned recently here that in uh, in uh, yeah, Ragoon, Ragoon. Yeah, that big gold gilded pagoda. That is a sight and a half and yet the sacrifices that are being given to the different idols in that pagoda it just blows your mind. These gods receiving food pilgrimages, meditations, mantras. And once again, we come back to this in closing today. I want you to take this sheet today and next week we'll finish. We're going to talk about witnessing to Hindus, but I would like to just say that religious beliefs and the caste system are the two critical issues of Indian history. The religious involvement and eclecticism is key, but grace is one of the greatest things that you can emphasize to them. Gift. It's a gift. You know, everything we have as believers is a gift from God. We don't deserve any of it. You know, and tonight in my message I'm going to be speaking about how happiness and holiness go together in God and in our lives. Joy. Everybody is looking for happiness in our country, in marriage, in work, you know, and we're going to talk about that, but let me just say this. If I have any happiness or joy, that's a gift from God. Not just my salvation, but my Having God Almighty's joy in my heart is the gift of God's grace. Okay? And we get to enjoy so many things. Last night, my wife is interrupting my study for tonight's message. If my message is not good and you hear it tonight, blame my wife. You know, I'm, I'm now taking it like a man. I'm blaming it on a woman. <laughs> Isn't that what it is to take it like a man? <laughs> <laughs> she told me, told me out, outside, outside, what's that, you know? Oh, there's this huge owl that has flown into the tree. You know, this dude was about that long. I mean, he was a male giant of an owl. And he's up in the top of our persimmon tree right above our shed where we put our cats. And she'd gone out to put water in the cat shed. We lock them up at night for protection. And... Uh, and here's this, and boy, you talk about the birds coming around and squawking. Alarm, alarm, the predator is in our territory. Watch out for your babies. <laughs> you know, and the birds are just raising a ruckus. But he was, he was calling and inviting other owls to him repeatedly. And my wife stayed out there. I went back to study, and she was out there when he flew away. But it's not every day you get to enjoy something like that, is it? That's a gift from God, isn't it? The things we get to enjoy that God gives us. Well, grace. Aren't you glad? And, and Hinduism is many times passive and negative. Bad karma, good karma. <laughs> How many days do you have that are a bad day in life? And how many days have you been bad? Bad karma's coming. <laughs> oh, to live under that, no.
good, every day is a good day Amen. in the Lord. And there is so much good we have to look forward to, grace. Amen. Yeah. Lord, thank you for your grace and your kindness to us. And Lord, I pray that we would enjoy you today and we have the prospect of enjoying you for eternity. And what a blessing we have in your grace to us, the things that we don't deserve. Lord, we don't deserve happiness or any kind of joy in marriage, but God, you've given that to so many of us. And we thank you in your grace. And thank you for the big and so-called little things of life here on earth. Amongst all of the evil, God, all the good things, you've daily loaded us with benefits. And we give you glory for it. In Christ's name, amen.